everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Well everybody, the 4th of July weekend is here again, and today, I want to take you back to a patriotic and inspirational superhero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Captain Steve Rogers, aka Captain America. If you may recall, back in July 2017, I blogged Steve's third leading movie, Civil War, which some fans label as Avengers 2.5, and in my opinion, it's an okay movie due to me not being a fan of superheroes fighting each other. But I still like that it was the debut of Black Panther, may he rest in peace, and that it also featured my favorite superhero, Spider-Man, whom I might talk about again later this year. But aside from that film, I also talked about Steve's roles in the Avengers movies, and to me, as Eagle Scout of Troop 604, Steve Rogers is one of several Marvel heroes that I look up to. Due to him having a noble and honest spirit, and he's a brave and inspirational leader. Sadly, after defeating Thanos and going back in time to return each Infinity Stone to the respective timeline, Steve returned and remained in the 1940s where he married Peggy Carter. And after reuniting with his friends in 2023, Steve entrusted Sam Wilson, aka the Falcon, with his mantle and shield. And now, as of June 30th, 2023, a new stage musical called Rogers the Musical has just begun performing at the Hyperion Theater at Disney California Adventure. And after seeing the promo on YouTube, I hope to soon see it with a few of my close friends. Also, thanks to the Disney Plus Hawkeye miniseries for foreshadowing it. Now, since I'm paying tribute to Captain America, I'll be blogging his first movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe before he became an Avenger from 2012 until 2023. Released on July 22nd, 2011, the movie is Captain America, The First Avenger. Now, on for the plot of the movie. It is 1941, and the world is in the throes of war. Steve Rogers wants to do his part and join America's armed forces, but the military rejects him because of his small stature. Finally, Steve gets his chance when he is accepted into an experimental program that turns him into a super soldier called Captain America. Joining forces with Bucky Barnes and Peggy Carter, Captain America leads the fight against the Nazi-backed Hydra organization. So, what are my thoughts on the film? Well, to me, this movie was absolutely amazing, and it makes me want to salute to it. But to further explain why I love this film, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The film began as a concept in 1997 and was scheduled for distribution by Artisan Entertainment. However, a lawsuit disrupted the project and was not settled until September 2003. In 2005, Marvel Studios received a loan from Merrill Lynch and planned to finance and release the film through Paramount Pictures. Directors John Favreau and Louis Leterrier were interested in directing the project before Joe Johnson was approached in 2008. For those who don't know, Joe Johnson is a classical director who's best known for directing Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, October Sky, Jumanji, The Rocketeer, as well as the live action segments in The Page Master and the reshoots for The Nutcracker in the Four Realms. Also, Joe Johnson got to work with George Lucas in his original Star Wars and Indiana Jones trilogies, and, believe it or not, Johnson designed the Iron Giant. Production began in June 2010, and filming took place in London, Manchester, Carewind, Liverpool, and Los Angeles. Several different techniques were used, 
by the visual effects company Lola to create the physical appearance of the character before he becomes Captain America. Now, despite the fact that I never saw this movie in theaters back then, when I first watched it on Blu-ray back in 2017 or 2018, uh, I can't really remember, I thought the movie was done very excellently. For example, I think it does great at capturing the setting of the 1940s, which was the time when World War II was going on. And I must let folks know that when I found out that my nono, Michele Oro, my Italian grandfather, was forced to be on Team Mussolini, I was in an absolute shock. And it made me not see my family in the same way again. But then again, I shouldn't let my family history change who I am today. Another thing that I liked in this movie, like the other MCU films, were the action and fight scenes, which in my opinion are really serious, epic, and thought-provoking. And like with the 2017 Wonder Woman movie, I like how it takes a certain historical event and turn it into an amazing superhero story. Also, I find it interesting that the movie features the Tesseract, which contains the Space Stone. And let me remind you, this Infinity Stone has had the most appearances throughout the MCU. And this film, chronologically, is the very first time it was ever seen, before it was kept at Camp Lehigh, before it was given to Kree scientist Marvell, aka Wendy Lawson, before it went into S.H.I.E.L.D.'s custody, and before it was taken to Asgard, until it was obtained by Thanos. In this film, the Tesseract was brought to Earth by Odin, and after being left on the planet, it ended up being kept safe in a church in the village of Tongsberg, Norway, until March 1942, when Johann Schmidt invaded Tongsberg, and took the Tesseract back to his Hydra headquarters to be experimented on. Also, one of the most memorable moments in the movie is when Steve participates in Project Rebirth and takes the Super Soldier Serum to become the superhero known as Captain America. And to me, seeing Steve go through that was very heart-pounding and painful, but I'm glad he got through it successfully. But... Steve wasn't the only person to become enhanced by that serum. You see, his friend Bucky Barnes was injected with the Super Soldier Serum by Arnon Zola when his unit was captured by Hydra. And years later, after the 9-11 attacks, Dr. Bruce Banner took the serum mixed with gamma radiation, causing him to transform into the large green-skinned being known as the Incredible Hulk. Another thing that I liked in this movie is the Star Spangled Man song, which is a patriotic montage song where Steve and a chorus line are touring the U.S. The song was written by the legendary Broadway and film composer Alan Menken with lyrics by David Zippel. Of course, who hasn't heard Alan Menken's work? He's practically the guy partly responsible for the revival of Disney during their legendary renaissance period back in the 1990s. And before then, he also composed the music for Little Shovel Horrors. As for David Zippel, well, he has a bit of Disney history too. You see, he did the lyrics for songs in Hercules and Mulan, and he also did the lyrics for Richard Rich's The Swan Princess. Speaking of which, I'll be blogging the latest 11th movie soon enough. Anyway, when I first heard Alan Menken sing this at the Seegerstrom back in late September 2016, I thought this was such a fun and patriotic song. And, in the words of Menken himself, it really screams out for Irving Berlin, in the sense of, this is the army Mr. Jones, or God Bless America. And now, let's move on to the film's cast. Our hero, Steve Rogers, a.k.a. Captain America, is played by Chris Evans, whom was the Human Torch in the Fantastic Four movies 
Casey Jones in TMNT, and Buzz Lightyear in Pixar's Lightyear. Now, as we all know, Steve is Earth's first well-known superhero, and as I said earlier, Steve is a man with a noble and honest spirit, and he's a brave and inspirational leader, and he really deserves the title of a living American legend. Plus, I think his outfit really captures the feeling of a patriotic super soldier, and I think his shield is such a remarkable weapon that I can totally picture Goofy using it in a future Kingdom Hearts game. Also, I really want to salute to Steve's heroism during 1943, where he joined the SSR after single-handedly liberating Allied prisoners from a Hydra base after which he began leading his team of Howling Commandos in many operations against Hydra. Plus, Steve ultimately helped the Allies win the war and defeat Hydra's leader, Red Skull. But sadly, he also made a very heroic sacrifice when he crashed into the Arctic in order to stop a plane carrying bombs bound for the U.S., and he spent 66 years unconscious and frozen in ice under a state of suspended animation before he was eventually found by S.H.I.E.L.D. in the early 21st century. Next is Agent Margaret Carter, a.k.a. Peggy, played by Haley Atwell, whom was in the 2015 Cinderella remake, the 2018 Christopher Robin movie, and Peter Rabbit 2. Now... I really like Peggy. She's tough, resolent, and she stands strong whenever she's being mistreated, be it by man or women. Also, as a loyal soldier, Carter is willing to do whatever is needed to get the job done. And being somewhat no-nonsense, she doesn't take kindly to messing about during a mission or when there was work to be done. Plus, She's also quite clever, always able to work her way out of a pinch at a moment's notice. Next up is Howard Stark, played by Dominic Cooper, whom I remember as Sky from the Mamma Mia movies. Howard is the father of Tony Stark, aka Iron Man, and he's the founder of Stark Industries. Howard worked on various government projects during World War II, including the Manhattan Project and Project Rebirth, the latter of which resulted in using the Super Soldier Serum to create Captain America. Presenting Rogers with his vibranium shield, Stark aided him, as well as the U.S. Army and the Strategic Scientific Reserve, in a fight against Hydra. In my eyes, Howard is a lot more likable compared to his son, and... I think this movie gives him a lot of character development. Plus, I find Howard to be charismatic and comical, but at the same time, he can be described as thoughtless, inconsiderate, vain, childish, unreliable, and arrogant, but still a good man. Next on our list is Colonel Chester Phillips, played by Tommy Lee Jones, whom I talked about in my blog of 1997's Volcano, and he got to be in films like the Men in Black franchise, Lincoln, and No Country for Old Men. Phillips is a colonel in the United States Army, and he's the first and only director of the Strategic Scientific Reserve, as well as Steve Rogers' commanding officer and one of the founding members of S.H.I.E.L.D. During World War II, Phillips was the key factor in the creation of the world's first super soldier and the defeat of Hydra. To me, Phillips is a gruff and iron-forged man who firmly believes in classical war values, but he can also be a very condescending blowhard with a lack of characteristic sense, whom still thought little to nothing of the enhanced individual. Another character to talk about is Steve's best friend, James Barnes, a.k.a. Bucky, played by Sebastian Stan. Barnes had enlisted into the Army following the attack on Pearl Harbor, 
and he was assigned to the 107th in 1943. Later, after Steve became Captain America, Bucky's unit was captured by Hydra. But thankfully, Barnes was rescued by Captain Rogers, and they then formed the Howling Commandos to battle Red Skull's forces. However, during the attempt to finally capture Zola in the Austrian mountains, Barnes was caught up in the ambush and he plummeted hundreds of feet. As no body was recovered, Barnes was presumed deceased, and he was honored as a hero who died in service to his country. However, in reality, not only did Bucky survive, but he was also captured and brainwashed by Hydra in order to become their operative, known as the Winter Soldier. However, that character will be a subject for another time. Finally, we come to the movie's main villain, Johann Schmidt, a.k.a. Red Skull, played by Hugo Weaving, whom was in the Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit trilogies, the Babe movies, the Happy Feet movies, and Legend of the Guardians, the Owls of Gahul. Schmitz was the head of Hydra, and having become a confidant of Adolf Hitler during World War II, Schmitz gained ambition to become the superior man, leading him to use the prototype of the super soldier serum on himself, resulting in him becoming disfigured with a red face, gaining him the name Red Skull. While leading Hydra, Red Skull found the Tesseract in Norway, which he believed could help him control the world. However, Red Skull's plans were challenged by the Allies' only super soldier, Captain America, who destroyed the Hydra facilities. Once Red Skull had launched his offensive, intending to bring the United States down to its knees, he was intercepted by Captain America. However, the fight ended when Red Skull touched the Tesseract with his bare hands and teleported to the planet Vormir, where he became the Stone Keeper who guides those who seek the Soul Stone. Fun fact, during the scene where Red Skull obtains the Tesseract, he refers to Idrisul, the World Tree, as the Guardian of Wisdom and Fate, which is referenced in Ralph Breaks the Internet when an internet user asks Groot if he's Idrisul's descent. Anyway, in my personal opinion, I find Red Skull to be a megalomaniac and an egocentric genius. Plus, unlike the other Nazis who believe that the Germans are the destined master race, he believes that the superior man has yet to be made. And now on to my final words. Overall, Captain America The First Avenger is a fantastic movie, and next to The Avengers, it's got to be my absolute favorite movie from the MCU's first phase. The cinematography is excellent. I love the film's depiction of the 1940s time period. The action and fight scenes are amazing. Several characters like Peggy, Howard, and Bucky were memorable supporting characters. Red Skull was a very menacing and badass villain, and the story makes a very patriotic origin story for Steve Rogers. And Chris Evans really does do a great job playing him that I really want to give him a big salute. If you're looking for a movie to watch for the 4th of July weekend, I highly recommend that you folks check this movie out. And I just hope to see Rogers the Musical during my next trip to Calvary Adventure before the show ends in August. Anyway, I give Captain America the first Avenger the highest rating of 100%. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog, Mustang Power. Oh, and happy Independence Day. Mm -hmm.